Hi, welcome to Texas Home with Mega Audio Source for Red Pill Truth. Today we're going to do this topic, um, Bad Girls, Episode 1. Bad Girls. You know, girls have done bad things. All right. Now, um, we, had a, we have a similarly, similar Jody Arias in the UK, and they're working on um, wrapping up the trial. I guess a 27-year-old single mom of one who has a portrait of some serial killers on the wall, so to speak. Hmm. Is it a coincidence? Is it a very good coincidence? I'm going to say nope. But uh, I'm fixing to do a story on this channel <clears throat> excuse me I'm fixing to do a story on this channel all right you know she had um, she had very controversial she's got tattoos all over her. and so some of these tattoos are pretty much graphic I want to say so to speak and she's from UK. And there's a gentleman in the, uh, you know, he lost his life to multiple stabbings. Um, he had no one to defend himself. He had no one to defend him. Anyways, I'm going to read this from a social media. Shay Groves, 27, accused of murdering Frankie Fitzgerald in uh, Botley Drive, Lay Park, UK, in the United Kingdom. This here is going to be another Jody Arias in the UK. So many people push for feminism and equal equality and all this bull corn. Well, when does feminism allow murder of men? When does it allow this? Huh? Well, to many people who follow feminism like a, uh, a dog following the tree needs to have their heads checked. Anyways, Grove, who claims self at the events of nice the killing in which Frankie suffered catastrophic blood loss. The court was told. And um, this warped and sadistic twist as the trial is underway at the Winchester Crown Court in UK. Groves has been accused of plunging a, a knife into his neck, causing a large split, then continued the attack with the, uh, the knife. Kind of similar to Jody Arias in Arizona with, with her ex-boyfriend traps so to speak cause it caused a large split and it continues to attack and, and you know Frank Frankie was going taking a dirt nap he was taking a dirt nap he lost a lot of blood Groves said to deliver more than 20 other blows to the chest and neck area so Females like this need to be executed by, by the firing squad and forgotten. Legacy forgotten. Children brainwashed to avoid this kind of crime. Seriously. And Groves had to rang up her um, pal laughing and giggling, showing um, a lifeless body during a video call. You know what? The cell tower is going to intercept that, and they're going to have documentation of that. That's going to put her in a, in a prison for life, hopefully. See, I don't know how UK's criminal justice works. So this is similar to Jody Arias in the United States. 
So, she asked Groves how it happened and was told by Groves that her and were not getting on well and had an argument and had to do with her ex. Okay? Grove had an ex she was in contact with. This is one of the reasons why majority of the men are telling men to hold off dating. Most men don't want to listen. They want to listen to the little head between their legs instead of listen to the others who almost got caught up in this, so to speak. If you, if you really want to get get graphic, I'm going to show you the graphic photos of, of this. I'm going to show you the graphic photos. All right? And uh, also, um, and she said Grove told her on the following morning on Frankie's mobile phone, going through text messages, came across a chat with, with a Another female, she, 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 Grove stated she lost it. She just lost it, stabbed him in the neck while he was sleeping. He woke up, started fighting back. That's when the dagger went around inside of his neck. And there was blood everywhere, according to Groves. Um, she was challenged on how she was going to get rid of the body. And uh, Grove said that she would bury the body in the back garden. Tampering with evidence, methinks. Um, and then uh, the police showed up to the house where he was, he was where his lifeless body was laying at. And Groves told him, I took a nine man's knife. He tried to attack her and had no, <clears throat> then gave no comment, answered to the police at the, while, when at the station. She knew she was guilty. And uh, it, the lifeless body was found early hours of July 17th of 2022, just after 8 a.m. by officers. Grove said he'd be obsessed with Frankie because his performance in the bedroom. Really? Really? That don't look like a performance in the bedroom to me. Um, you know, Groves is pictured with a serial image, serial killer images in the wall, two axes, four knives in her room, and a camera. Um, anyways, Anyways, I'm going to do this. Uh, there's, there is a, uh, somebody uh, posted one of the frame, in their, one of the selfie pictures of serial murderer Peter William Sutcliffe, the Yorkshire Ripper. I got the uh, photo right here in front of me. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna put up photos on here, and uh, I'm gonna give you some photos. And uh, this is a topic. She's gonna be headed for prison for a long time. This is a photo of a prison. She's going to prison for a long time. All right. So I'm thinking, go ahead, find you another photo that I'm talking about. Okay. And. Um, I'm going to show you a photo of a Yorkshire Ripper that, that was being mentioned on social media. All right. She's over here smiling in the selfie. Now, that you see that little, uh, look, look on this photo here I got in front of you. One of these photos is a Yorkshire Ripper. 
I don't know which one it is. And I'm going to take this here down and I'm going to add another one. I'm going to add another photo. And the victim that's unable to speak at the trial will. He lost his life to a major, to a knife attack. All right, you lost it. Now this this gentleman right here lost his life to a brutal knife attack. Okay, so he don't look like somebody that will abuse a female, does he? Look in your comment. Type in a comment. This guy. He lost his life while he was asleep. Now, this is why I tell passport brothers, you're putting your life in the other woman's hands when you go traveling abroad for love and stuff. You're putting your life in somebody else's hand, in the country's hand. Their legal system is different from the United States. I know, I know, I know. You want to go and uh, establish family and stuff. Hey, more power to you. Go for it. But uh, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and take this picture down. And I'm going to get another one. And anyways, uh, she, she took another selfie. She took another selfie, all right? And it was pretty bad. All right? Look at that. Look at this. All the tattoos all over her. Looks scary. Look at here. Here's some other serial murders right there on the wall. I don't know if she's got any weapons behind here or not. Anyways. And I think she's involved in Wicca. I think she's involved in Wicca. Look at look at this. Look at this thing right here. A penta a satanic pentagram with Wicca on it. I can't believe Wicca's Wiccans believe in uh, harming souls. It's not even that pretty. Hmm. It's not even that pretty. So look at this. Look at what I found here. And I'm going to go ahead and cover this, this story. Mother, mother, uh, 27, who had photos of, okay, include Ted Bundy and Jeffrey Dahmer on my bedroom wall. Stabbed her lover to death as he slept and giggled as she showed off her friend on a video called I've Done Him. All she had to do is uh, go to the law and let the law handle it. And that was in the UK. Shana, Shaya Groves, 27, accused of murdering July 27, 2022. And, uh, of course, bedroom, bedroom fun with bondage, BDSM, and all that. I don't believe in that crapola. That's abuse to a, a human. Pure abuse. Groves alleged to have stabbed him 22 times, caused some catastrophic blood loss. She denies murdering him in a crime of passion at a home in a Heaven Hampshire, UK. This was in UK. And... This, she's a serial killer, obsessed mother giggle, and she brutally stabbed her lover to death. This is like another Jody Arias in Britain. How many of you remember Jody Arias when she stabbed her boyfriend in the shower, saying that he tried to attack her? There was no bruises, no fist marks, nothing. All right. She had famous 
framed a portrait of notorious Ted Bundy and Jeff with Jeffrey Dahmer. She told her friend I done him after launching an attack on his sleeping boyfriend, Frankie Fitzgerald. Anyways. Um, maybe they are to just uh ban knives or have a police go to every home and supervise somebody using knives in the kitchen, make sure they don't commit a crime. Hmm. I'm uh, just being sarcastic. By the one who owned a set of decorative knives adorned with the film villains, said I've used blade articles in the bedroom for a knife play and enjoyed masochism bondage submission, which Mr. Fitzgerald ever have at home. Um, Rose, who denied murder, allegedly stabbed her boyfriend 22 times in a crime of passion in July 20, 17th of last year before. Creating a false alibi using true crime documentaries as her aspiration, inspiration. Look at this, this victim right here. I already showed you this. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and see. This is the uh, uh, UK police uh, ambulance, police van, uh, police vehicles. I don't know what this is, but they got this area blockade off. Uh, anyways, this is graphic. It's very graphic. All right. Men, I'm talking to you. Don't meet a friggin' woman in a friggin' bar. You're, you ain't gonna find love in no damn bar. Okay? You are not going to find love in a bar. You're going to find a serial killer. You're going to find a murderer. You're going to find a beater. You're going to find an abuser. You're going to find a criminal Wiccan practicer at a bar trying to find love in odd, weird situations. It's like trying to find love in a pig pen, so to speak. So, yeah, I'm opinionated. Anyways, the court heard how Groves grew obsessed with Mr. Fitzgerald's performance in the bedroom. That's not, that's not the way to love a guy, really. Jurors heard that Winchester Crown Court, that after ruling Groves' video called, who horrified to see it, Norm, Norma's knife wound. Groves and alleged sent a message early hours of, were. She hoped to create a false ally using word. She left her home. So the police officer heard a phone call from the giggling groves. It was very normal conversation where they discussed their weekend. She was giggling. She was laughing. She goes to the pub and these men, they go over there, they... <clears throat> they go simping for her. They go they go kissing her feet and simping. You ain't gonna find love in no damn bar, okay? What is wrong with you, man? Grove then proceeded to start a video call where she went upstairs to her bedroom and pointed the camera at uh, Fitzgerald and said, I've done him, the court heard. And her, one of her friends said, she would not believe it's for real. And uh, it was lying on bin bags twice more. At one point, I'm gonna put this in the description. And um, she, her friends had kissed her in the house. But they were talking about the gash was so deep and, and all that. 
Just look at this. Mm. Man, if you're in a relationship and your girl is starting fights and stuff, your best bet is to get out. Get out. Okay? In response, Groves calmly delivered explanation about what had happened. She had gone through his phone, seen this message and another female. While he was asleep, she pulled a dagger through the neck and that's when he awoke. He was asleep. She wasn't even in danger. Did you get that? She was not even being harmed, but she took a dagger and went to kill her ex-boyfriend while he slept. You know, he said, I couldn't understand if he was attacking her, but she told me he was asleep. He couldn't even fight back. Man, this is your warning right here. There's some bad girls out there that have tendency to commit violence. Jurors heard from Miss from the friend that girl had four decorative knives hanging on the uh, wall for her, and they were using knife play when it came to. They were playing with knives about doing the bedroom fun. This is a recipe for disaster. Um, look at this. The four knives have a depiction of Chucky, Jigsaw, Pennywise, on near two axes or were easily accessible by anyone. And she got her idea from the murderer documentaries from the uh, media outlets. Media outlets need to be stripped of anything that shows this on the public TVs. Alright. And a friend told her that she had watched murder documentaries to show her how plan to bury the body in the back garden wouldn't work. See, she was interested in watching nothing but deletions on the flat screen TV. And she had framed portraits of notorious serial deleters, including Ted Bundy and Jeffrey Dahmer. And, uh, Jurors heard from the friend that Grove was known to carry a knife for, with her for safety when walking along. Britain is the most video cameras. They got the most video cameras per capita in the world. It's the most surveillance state there is. So really, at the end of the call, friends, the last words were, we're still friends, aren't we? The court heard a pathologist report which explains that Mrs. Fedger was stabbed 17 times to the front of the chest, twice to the other chest area, three times to the neck, resulting in the death, multiple perforations of the heart and lungs, and catastrophic blood loss. The footage of the officer who arrived at the scene earlier played, played the court reported a strong smell of bleach in the bedroom. Alright, Groves could be her and I was going to call you myself. I don't know what happened. She claimed she, he tried to hurt her and he had food video footage of him in my room. It's really a mess. I took somebody's life. The knife I used is in the sink because it's brutal. Put in his neck, he rolled over. Well, she denies the murder. Well, she. Well, they, they're fixing to the convict her. They're fixing to the hand her the roughest sentence. But I don't, I'm pretty sure the judge is probably either seen this worst case scenario or this might be the first gruesome case he ever presided over. Groves denies the work. She acted in self defense. The trial is expected to last four weeks, continues. All right. This was updated yesterday to reporter. 
And this is her right here. She's a... If you can't tell, she is, you know, sadistic and evil. I mean, I, I don't know. <coughs> so, the court briefly heard an obsessed grove made a false alibi for herself that inspired from tips from the true crime documentaries. Whoever broadcast this out op open waves, they need to be um, stripped of publishing such content. So anyways, the court previously heard of this, that Grover had a false alibi. Well, of course, y'all know it ain't gonna hold up. They're gonna, they, they're gonna convict her in court on this, all right? So she was giggling. And this is a uh, police vehicle in the UK. And, you know, Lauren White, something, I don't know who's that, who that is, but uh, I'm pretty sure they're gonna interview her. You know, then she grows said to me, it's really big. I promise not to tell anyone. Well, it's too late. The cat let out of the bag already. You're going, you're going to go away for a very long time. So I don't know how the justice in Britain is handled for uh, people who commit crimes. I mean, I don't know how, I don't know how they, uh, I don't know how they, um, you know, handle it. And uh, later out here, she, they say she got close to the wound. She heard, uh, couldn't believe it was real. And, uh, you know, she went back to her bedroom show, uh, wrapped in duvet and lying on bin bags twice more. Um... I don't know if they got this here blocked off. I don't know if that's where the body's at. Anyways. You know. This is, getting, this is really, really, really dangerous to go on a date. You don't know what's going to be out there, okay? And... You know, I read this earlier, all right? Now, well, I think this is pretty much, you know, this is, this is pretty graphic. I'm going I'm to include this into... I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to include this into the uh, description. So, she giggled, show off, and this is, this is going to be included in the description. Um, this here, she reminds me of a Jody Arias here in the United States. All right. This is from the Toronto Sun. Of course, I'm going to include that in the uh, description. The Sun is from UK as well. They call her, they call her this. And this is really not very pleasant to look at. 
I'm going to include that in the description. So, enjoy a digital access for one pound for six months. Uh, I think I'll pass up on the offer. All right, this is another UK uh, media covering this. All right, this was the 13th of January, three minute read. I mean, is this prosecutor and just, um, the prosecutor, okay, now this here is a fresh, this is a fresh one, okay? All right, um, here we go. Here's another, here's another one that's fresh. She caused a, cat, uh, caused a loss of blood on Frankie, all right, and throat. Once a knife into the neck, leaving a large split that opened the back of his throat, he slept at her Botley Drive home in Lay Park, UK. All right, despite an inevitable fatal wound, she stabbed out, she stabbed and stabbed and stabbed. And she's pleading self-defense, really? Well, I mean, the man is taking a dirt nap at your, your blood's already on his hands. You're taking a dirt nap. You know, somebody's gotta pay for his funeral. I don't know how they gonna, I don't know how they do that in Britain. Um, anyways, she was setting up a CCTV to show recordings, but I don't know if they, uh, anyways, court heard the day before the, they had a bust up with, you know, I, I don't think this is true. She was really obsessed in, you know, committing these crimes, all right? Prosecutor Steve Perrien, KC said, Grove told victim, I want to pick up a dagger and put it straight in his neck. That was premeditated. In, in my eyes as a uh, YouTuber, it's premeditated. And the CCTV played by the court showed Grove conspiring to hurt Frankie and planning for him to be attacked in a dark alleyway with her covering up her tracks by saying she would get one of those men to kick her so he would not be suspect she arranged it. See, again, she's, perp she's a perpetrator in this. Look at this. Shows inside her mind her ability to hurt and plan where she'd be considered a victim. I'm glad the courts can see through the lies right there. <clears throat> He added a recording to demonstrate what a cunning, astute, calculating woman she is and able to think every time, get away with murder. I'm glad the people in Britain are actually, the, the courts in Britain are actually waking up that bad girls are committing crimes of this dark, heinous means. <clears throat> so anyways, the prosecutor dismissed Grove's claim she was suffered violence and whatever. And the video recorded on and a other okay, the a video recorded on May twenty third, admitting it was not what she claimed it was, he added. He sent out a role play video, police said she was a victim of this, yeah. You know, many serial killers are really professional liars and cunning narcissists. So if she has a child, I wonder what kind of legacy she's going to leave behind for her child, really. Mm. It is sad. She stabbed him and intended to cause a grievous bodily harm. It was a crime of passion driven by her jealousy. Really? Mm. 
Now, men, you can do anything you want with your body, your body, your choice. You can have alcohol and go out and do recreational drugs. But again, if you're in a, a woman's crib and she and she has a photos or pictures of serial killers on the wall, that right there, I, I can't say I feel sorry for the, the man who succumbed to the injuries. Okay? I'm not saying he had it coming. Okay? But what I'm saying is he succumbed to the injuries because of the fact of the matter that um, he, chose, he went to the pub to hope to find love, reconnected with the ex. Okay? You do not take your ex back. I don't care how good or changed they are. You simply do not take an ex person back. And we're fixing to get on to another topic within the same video right here, all right? He had alcohol, cocaine, and since when he woke up after being stabbed and tried to fight back <coughs> before collapsing at the bottom of the bed with a pool of blood. Mr. Perian pointed to Grove a lack of remorse as he was laying there, you know, taking a dirt nap upstairs in her bedroom. She was involved with lovey dovey chat with another man. So she had another backup partner. Many women don't understand this. Listen, it's not meant for you to be understood. This is more like a uh, movie play, if you, if you will. And um, the prosecutor added this. And uh, someone who admired violent criminal Charles Bronson. <coughs> she had, okay, now, Grove is someone who admired violent criminal Charles Bronson. Had a serial killer pictures in her bedroom while murder documentaries. He said he created a false narrative to set up an alibi to clean up a crime scene to get away with deletion. This, you know, this is going to be put in this five days ago. Oh, uh, you know what? There's another, um, here's another, okay, here's another one. He's 25 years old. And she's 27. Mrs. Grove's 27. It's very interesting right here. And I don't know what the age of consent in UK is. And, um, you know, like I said, every laws around the world are different. Frankie Fitzgerald, 25, from Portsmouth, UK, found this found deceased at Shea Grove's home in Havant, July 17, 2022. All right. Miss Grove was known as uh, Shea Corrigan of Botley Drive denies charge of in murder. Of course she did it. She's going to deny it. Hmm? <coughs> the Winchester Crown Court the court in UK, they're, 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 I don't know how long that trial is going to last, but I'm going to do a part two of this, okay? And uh, this case here is similar to the case that we had in Arizona with Jody Arias and Travis. You know, I want to go to say that much, okay? And the police body worn camera showed Miss Grove telling the officer were try to attack the court. We're told. I'm glad that see. I'm glad the police have body cams to help with the conviction. And three edited clips sent to the friend suggested they were edited clips. <coughs> Excuse me. 
But the court said police recovered the original footage in which Mr. Perian suggested portrayed consensual bedroom fun. That man was 25 years old when he lost his life last year, okay? But the trial continued. That man was 25 years old when he lost his life. Now, the next next thing I'm going to talk about is related to this is Jody Arias. It happened in 2006 at Las Vegas, Nevada. And, um, anyways, I'm going to continue on, okay? I don't know how many uh, uh, remember Jody Arias, the case that drew world attention at one time. So, I'm going to blow this up a little bit bigger. So, um, anyway, Jody Arias met Travis Alexander in a business convention in Las Vegas, Nevada. They became friends right away. She was baptized in the Mormon faith again. Many churches want to force convert people by force. It's a big no-no in my book. Some months later, two were dating, but they had broken up in summer of 2007. Alexander began dating other women. You know, they broke up. And, uh, anyways, around the same time, Alexander told friends he believed Arias was stalking him to continue a fragmented friendship. Listen, when you break up in the friendship, man, end it. When Arias moved to California, they continued to communicate. That's a big, that's a big bad no-no. <clears throat> now, with this UK trial that's gone going, all right, 22 times fatal, okay. On June 4, 2008, Travis was deleted in his home in Mesa, Arizona. 27 stab wounds, slit throat, gunshot to his face. See, in Britain, you're not allowed to own a gun, or you can own a gun, but it's got to be under lock and key, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Alexander was meant to leave on a trip to Cancun, Mexico on June 10th. Originally, he planned to take his girlfriend, uh, Jody Arias, on a trip, but reportedly in April, he decided to take another woman, Mimi Hall, instead. Now, here, here you go. It's still, unlike Fitzgerald in the UK, found in a bed, you know, lifeless, Okay, Alexander was found in a shower, blood everywhere. After missing a conference call with a concerned friend entering his home, where he found pools of blood leading to his body in the shower, 911 call implicated Aria, Arias as an ex-girlfriend who has been stalking Alexander. Arias' grandparents came home to California, where she had been living and was robbed of May 2008. So, <clears throat> prosecutors speculated that Araya staged a burglary herself and used a gun she stole to kill her ex-boyfriend at the time between Alexander's death on the June 4th discovery of body on June 9th. Araya repeatedly left message on his voicemail. She did the effort to place her away from the crime scene. So I imagine her and uh, that girl in the UK would make great friends, if you ask me, to appear concerned about Ale Alexander's well-being. Hmm. Okay, at the crime scene, they found his damaged digital camera. They were eventually able to recover the images, which include Arias, Arias and Alexander and uh, Ooh, explicit pulses, which were stamped on about 140 on June 4th. See? June 4th. Last photo he was live was in the shower taken at 5.29 p.m. Right ac after accidental image of the bleeding person likely Alexander was taken. Use the timestamp picture to determine 
Alexander's exact TOD time of death. Okay, investigators discovered a body palm print, which was a mixture of Alexander's and Aria's DNA. See, here in the USA, you can't cheat the uh, the justice system. It's getting better and better and better to where um, people who try to think they can get by with committing a crime will not be able to do so. Throughout the investigation, Arias insisted the last time they saw Alexander was April 2008. So how can you say that the last time you saw him was April 2008 when it was June? So you took off two months trying to make yourself away from that crime scene. That's how you got caught in lie. Despite the photographic and DNA evidence placing her at the home of the day of the uh, deletion, later on, she changed her story, proof she lied again, and stated she was in the home when two intruders broke in and attacked both of them, eventually hurting Alexander. So she placed two people that would never exist in the home. She was the only one there. And notice, she was indicted on first degree murder charge on 20, July 9th, 2008, and pleaded not guilty on September 9th, 11th, 2008. Trial began in January 2013. Prosecutors sought the death penalty for Arias on February 6th. She testified that she had killed him, and self defense stated that he was abusive. So my question to you is, if a man's abusive, how come did he break up with you and want to go his own way? How can that be abusive? Can you please explain that to me? The jurors did not read a consensus whether the murder was premeditated or not. Well, it was premeditated. All right, so look at this. Now, look at this. Anyway, let's go ahead and conclude on this. Arias' bizarre behavior throughout the investigative prompted expert to diagnose her with PTSD and border BPD, borderline personality disorder. Wow. On May 16th, penalty phase of the trial, which juror decided was she receive the death penalty or life in prison. And on May 21st, Arias pleaded for life in prison despite asking for death penalty years earlier. Then put on, she was put on deletion watch shortly after found guilty. But you know, the jury already convicted her of that, that, that crime. And uh, jury, they felt re unanimous decision re re declaring a hung jury. According to Huffington Post, a new jury will be selected to determine Arreya's fate. It was scheduled at July 18th. At that point, she would be sentenced to death or life in prison for 25 years. It ran the clock coverage on num numerous number of media outlets, which incited renewed interest in the justice system. So it took a, it took a, it took a man being brutally murdered to take a second look at the justice system. <coughs> All right. Now. The gruesome crime of Jody Arias, who stabbed her ex-boyfriend 27 times and cut his throat from ear to ear. Because, he, they, because they broke up. Right after having bedroom fun with Travis, Jody Arias fatally stabbed him, slit his throat, shot him in the head with it, in his Arizona home. Arizona home. And... There's her. There's Jody Arias.
There's Travis Alexander. And <clears throat> I hate to tell you, but getting converted. Um, she was very, very controlling. Look at that. Look. Okay. Well, this here, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I'm going to go ahead and include this in the uh, description. There, okay. I'm going to tell you all this. Hear this. Warning, this article con 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 contains graphic description images of violent, disturbing, otherwise potentially distressing events. In the beginning, Jody O'Reilly and Travis Alexander's love story seemed like a fairy tale. But she had, uh, she had, she had, re what, you know, I want to say uh, separation issues after being broken up. She turned into jealous. She turned into someone being jealous. After me and Jordan, okay, you know, and then uh, she converted to a faith of Travis Alexander. All right. She'd been obsessive, jealous, and controlling. Let me re let me reread this. Look at that. What happened, Alexander's friends, family members said that Arias has been obsessive, jealous, and controlling, which escalated to a lover's violent murder on June 4, 2008. But Arias insisted there was another side to the story. Yeah, uh, well, well, I know she's lying. Anyways, um, she, again... Notice, she was forced to kill him in self-defense. She's the one that had the weapon, not him. The same thing in the UK with the uh, Fitzgerald case that being tried in Crown Court. All right? I'm doing this here in addition to this video to prove how lethal things can take a turn. But note, she was not a single mom. All right, Jody Arias was not a single mother. Her life ever changing story, Beauty's highly charged bedroom fun relationship with Alexander Captivator, the trial played out. She's serving out a life sentence for her actions. She's still making news. This was published January 15th, 2023. So she looks innocent and charming but she is obsessive jealous and controlling look at that you can see it in her face okay she was born in salinas california jody arias claimed that she had an abusive childhood no she did not but her mama said as andra however said her early life been perfectly normal But Sandra Arias admitted her daughter had issues. Jody had mental problems. Jody would freak out all the time, she told investigators. According to, I had quite a few of her friends call and tell me I needed to get her some help. <coughs> well... Jody Arias had a pattern of secrecy started her after her parents caught her growing marijuana at the age of 14. She also dropped out of high school, struggled to make ends meet as a waitress while dreaming of becoming a successful photographer. In 2006, she met Travis Alexander, a Mormon right here. So would you think this guy right here would do any harm to anyone? So, ABD, they met a work convention in Vegas, in Las, Las Vegas, Nevada. Prepaid legal service. Arias was looking for a networking opportunity. Spark flew when they, when they crossed, crossed path. 
She's beautiful, friendly. I had long blonde hair, cute figure. She was very sweet. Mm. But it cost him his life. Sky Hughes, a friend, a friend of Alexandra, said that she seemed like to him much he liked her. And when she had now, now just by looking at the uh, story above, when she grew weed and dropped out of high school, barely made ends meet. That's not like somebody that's going to rebel against society. The next morning he tells, finds a wife and a girl he wants to marry. And they truthfully seem like love at first sight. Thanks between Jody and Travis would take a dark turn. So the relationship went south. She's serving a life sentence. It seemed perfect, okay? They lived in different states, Rise in California, Alexandra, and Arizona. They stayed in regular contact. She would visit Alexandra at his mess home and convert it to Mormonism with for Alexander. And this is very scary. <clears throat> so really, she did not convert. She just put on the uh, sheep clothing while she was a uh, ravening lunatic, so to speak. All right. And um, he took his guilt out on her and called her a mm, S-word. Meanwhile, stuck many of Alexander's unhealthy obsessed with him. They recounted Arias snooping through Alexander's emails, eavesdropped on his private conversation, even followed him to the bathroom to wait out the door until he walked out. Arias and Alexander seemed to be near constant all the time. He too would exchange 82,000 emails throughout the relationship. So, uh, started seeing things were disturbing, loving. He was told the ABCs. I said, Travis, I'm afraid we're going to find you chopped up in her freezer from early on. She was completely obsessed with him. Um, so, her obsession deepened with him, all right? It deepened. It deepened later on, okay? So I'm thinking to read up on here where it led to the, um, the, and warning, some of these here might have images, might be graphic for you, okay? So uh, anyways, Alexander, he had tended to end things after five months, five months in the relationship. Arias' obsession with him deepened. They remained in contact. She was somehow turned up, up as, at his house and invited. He also reacted Angrily, angrily. Alexander also fre frequently to have bedroom fun with Arias, even the pair officially split in 2007. They continue to see each other. Hmm. Fatal attraction, if you wanted to know what my thought is on this. Revive, you know, that reveal that he called her up a month before his murder and told her he wanted to tie her up in a tree and no, I don't think he would do that, really. But outwardly, Alexander seemed moved on. He started dating other women, despite the fact that Arias reportedly harassed them and slashed his tires in revenge, undeterred. He planned to attend a company retreat with a new love interest. As friends tried to get in touch with him, his, as the trip approached, Alexander didn't reply, well, now you know why. So, I said, T-Dog, you better, better be, Alexander Friends Hughes told me, I was like, I was joking, call me back. But he was deleted by the time his friend went to his home. He'd been, he'd been deleted for five days. This is the shower that he was found in. So, and... Mm. This is gruesome.
and his friend went to check on him at his home in Mesa, Arizona. They found blood everywhere. They discovered a friend's mangled body in the shower. 30-year-old had been stabbed 27 times. Throat cut ear to ear. He's been shot in the head. His friend called police before long suspicion fell on Jody Arias, then 27. So, you see, she was convicted in 2008. She was 27 at that time, okay? So, what would her age be right now? Right now, Jody, Jody would be, um, she was 27 at that time, okay? So right now, she's over the hill right now, 42 years old. If she ever gets out of prison to hope to ha raise a family, she's done. She's 42. She's probably going through a hot flash and menopause right by now. But at first, Jody Arias claimed she could not kill uh, 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 you know, she told police that she was driving through Utah to meet another man she was dating when it, when he was. See, so she had an alibi that had holes in it, worse than the Swiss cheese. <clears throat> I know I talked to him earlier Monday morning. She told the detective, claiming she had not seen her ex boyfriend since April. She was kind of guilting me because I wasn't going to Arizona, I was going to Utah. Nah. She went to Arizona. They found her DNA. They found his DNA on a digital camera. They also found a knife that was used in a permitted to, to, to attack. They found a pistol. All the evidence that pointed her to the crime scene was found by the police and the detectives and it was presented to the court where she was convicted, I believe, for life in prison. However, investigators found irrefutable proof that Jody Arias had been with Travis on the exact date that he passed. So, the camera recovered from the washing machine at Alexander's home contained graphic photos. June 4th, the day that he was murdered, June 4th. Shockingly, there's a, there's a photo of his mutilated body after he passed. What's more... They recovered both Arias and Alexander's DNA from a bloody handprint found on a wall in the home. Jody Arias was quickly arrested. Her story began to change. So, so he, he she snapped this photo before he was murdered, right there. So when she changed her story, she admitted it being with Travis the day he was killed, okay? She said she was taking photos of Alexander in the shower after they had bedroom fun with two masked intruders, so they broke in. See, again, she's trying to pin that uh, crime on two, in two uh, invisible fairy tale men that don't exist. And she was there the whole time, okay? Arias claimed that the um, intruders threatened her and told her not to tell anyone. Of course, that's a cooked up lie, so to speak. It was the scariest experience of her life. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. She's got caught. That's what scariest experience is. It's unreal. It's like a movie unfolding, a horrible movie. Well, she probably watched documentaries. The same thing that this chick in the uh, UK did, all right? She watched documentaries and she had photos of, of the serial killers on the walls. That's obvious right there. But the investigator had older reason to believe that Arias has killed Alexander in addition to bloody handprint on a damning photograph. They also found Alexander had been shot with a 25 caliber gun. That was stolen from her grandma's house. That was botched burglary. 
So same kind of, that was stolen from Arias' grandparents' house just a week before his death. It's right there. Okay, so she changed her hair from blonde to a brown. But they sought the death penalty. The jurors saw the evidence right in front of them. Couldn't decide. Charged with first degree murder, faced the death penalty. Jody Arise told a different story during her trial in 2013. And she would drop the camera while taking pictures of him in the shower. She, she took him out in self-defense. Who's going to believe that? Nah. I, I, I don't. She had the weapon in her hand, and he didn't. So who's the real victim in this story? That's why I'm trying to get you to see who is the real victim. If you say Jody Arias is a real victim, you got to be really kidding me. So this here is going to be used in UK. I can almost bet you this here is going to be used in UK. And her mission was basically to delete the brother again for a second time by destroying his reputation. So the man was already taking a dirt nap when she tried to ruin his reputation. Stephen Alexander said that, said the gun the defense story was like a joke. My brother did not even own a gun. They, the investigators dug into his background. He did not own any weapons. He was of a Mormon faith. I don't know how the Mormons believe. Here's the other one who did buy Arias stories. In, in May, a jury found J Jody Arias guilty of first degree murder. She was ultimately sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. So, fate sealed. The real justice will be in the afterlife when Jody burns in Hades. Alexander's sister, Tanisha Sorensen, said the uh, sentencing. Now, all right, where is she at today? She continues to make the news. She's serving out her life sentence in Arizona State Prison Complex, Perryville. But she continues to make news. Again, she's trying to buy her way out of the uh, conviction. It's already been sealed. Case closed, sealed. She filed an appeal based on the misconduct of a prosecutor, Juan Martinez, which she lost in 2020. Sued her former defense lawyer, Nermi, after he wrote a book on the case. He was eventually disbarred. She made a splash among inmates who said that she used her bedroom fund to manipulate other inmates and guards. <clears throat> Men? And Passport Brothers, I hope you watch this video. I know, I know, you want to carry on your legacy. But you can carry on your legacy with the wrong person. And, and consequences, consequences can be grave, okay? In 2015, she re expressed regret. It's too late. It's too late. She expressed regret about Travis deletion during her sentencing in 2015. It seemed like she had adjusted her new life in prison. In a recorded call in 2016, she was heard saying, if this is what it's like to be hated, then keep hating. I had so much love coming my direction. I cannot even respond to it now. She See, she has validation coming in from behind bars. She's been reported and contacted by many admirers, some whom she's considered marrying in a jailhouse wedding.
okay? So who's going to make the money on this ad behind bars, Jody Arias? So... I mean... They're going to do a movie about her. What? I, I mean... The Hollywood industry is capitalizing on this. Oh, get this. After reading about what Jordan I see how Shanna Huberts killed her boyfriend, then alarm peace police for their bizarre behavior, or learn how Amanda McClure deleted her boyfriend so she could marry the father her father. Wow. I, I, I'm going to include this in the description, people. So, this is pretty much the same thing, okay? This is the same thing, all right? Well, I, that was the same article. Um, well, um, anyways, she's getting validation behind bars. You're right. See all this here? I already already covered that. So I'm gonna add this in the description. And this is pretty graphic. All right. Um, she does not have a chance for a new new trial. The trial is already over with. One jury couldn't de decide not. She cannot have another trial. All they gotta do is represent the evidence all over again, and her story keeps changing. It's sealed. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna include this here in the um, anyways. All right. I, I'm not going to play this, but I'm going to include this for your um, viewing. And uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and include all these links together in the, the description. Okay. And uh, thank you for watching this video. And peace.